Yes, another beautiful day. Good morning. This is your daily devotion that comes on your way. Word, power, today. Watch my words. Word, power, today. You need the word of God to give you a start for the day. And I'm reading the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse number 12. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and of the marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God that will lead us today to understand why Jesus died. Before I get deeper into why Jesus died, may I say this? The word of God is alive. The word of God is not dead literature. The word of God is alive. It is powerful. It carries supernatural force. The word of God has a sharpness, sharper than the surgeon's life, knife all the blade that they use to open up the human body, it is sharper than any sharpness you can imagine. This word of God is able to go into your soul, your suke, the soul of a man, the spirit of a man, which in the Greek is the pneuma, it is also able to go into the joints and the marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's a powerful scripture we are looking at. That it is the word of God that has got answers to the issues that man has in life. The word of God will solve your social problems, your psychological problems, your moral problems. It will solve your financial problems. The word of God will address things that human beings have failed to resolve. Because it is God's spoken word. Now, this word is Jesus. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. That word was made to become flesh. It dwelled among men. And when that word was in the world, it became light. And light would not comprehend it. And as men as received him, they were given power to become the sons and the daughters of God. This Jesus is the word we are discussing. This is the word of God which is alive. It's not a dead word. The words written by Shakespeare. The words written by Ngugi Wadiongo, Chinua Ajebe, the words written by great writers and authors, they will not be carrying the same potency and power like what the Word of God has. The, the, the King James translation uses the word quick, but when you look at it from the Greek perspective, it is a living word. It has life. It has activity. It has action. It has motion. It is not just a dead letter. So when I'm speaking, I'm speaking live. And this word is powerful. 
it carries supernatural power, supernatural potency. It carries supernatural energy. The word of God addresses issues. The word of God brings solutions and it is sharper. It is likened like a surgeon's knife where they just cut once, they are there. The second cut, third cut, they are there. Whatever they are looking for, it comes out exposed. This word is able to discern or to divide. It goes into the mind of a man, the heart of a man, and the body of a man. There is nothing that remains hidden before God. You know, I'm excited that this word which I'm reading from this printed page, this word that I'm holding, it may be letters, but it becomes alive when the Holy Spirit enters you and you begin to confess it, you begin to declare it, nothing remains hidden from it. It goes deeper, it's able to go into the mind of a man, it knows the thoughts of a man, it knows the psychology of a man, it understands what you are planning, it knows whether your thoughts are good or they are bad, whether they are evil, it, it, it sees you in totality. You cannot hide from God. You know you may pretend the pastor may not know you, the bishop may not know you, your wife may not know you, the children may not know you, your employer will not know you. Nobody will know what you are thinking. Because in our thoughts, all people think things. People think how to murder, how to kill, how to commit abortion. People in their minds, they are seeing phonographic literature. People are, are, are planning schemes of destroying others. But once this word comes on your way, I'm talking of the Bible. I'm talking of Christ in the Bible. This word divides the thoughts of a man. It discovers, it pierces. It divides asunder the soul and the spirit and is able to go into the body of a human being and bring total restoration. Because it says it knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Here the heart is the very center of man, the spirit of man, the pneuma. Oh yes, is able to penetrate, you know, when you look at medicines that the doctors give us, they'll tell you it has got action hours, maybe three hours, maybe four hours, six hours, maybe 24 hours, and it stops. And there are certain drugs which will not be able to break certain barriers. But the Spirit of God, using the Word of God, there is nothing hidden. It cannot be able to see. Young man, God's word exposes you. Papa, mama, the word of God exposes you. That's why you need to come out openly and say, yes, I need Christ. I need this Jesus so that he can straighten me up. Are you in a mess? Are you in a situation you don't know what to do? Are you in a place where you have come to the end? The word of God is alive. Uh, let me declare to you, you can begin again. You can have a new life. The death of Christ will bring results. The, the death of Christ will give you a new beginning. He died because it was God's eternal plan that he had to die. He died for you and for me. First Peter 1, 18 to 20, it tells us why he died. In Acts 2, 22 to 23, the prince of life who was crucified and God would not allow him to remain in the grave was resurrected. It was part of God's eternal plan that Christ will die. He died for you, he died for me. His death was already foretold 
hundreds of years behind. You know, before the law, it was mentioned that he will die. In the Psalms, it was mentioned he will die. The prophets prophesied he will die. Look to 24, 20, uh, 27. It was prophesied that he would die. He would go to Jerusalem and die. He will be buried, he will be resurrected, come back to life. When you look at Luke 24, 44 to 45, you discover that had to take place. In Matthew 5 and 17, he had to fulfill the law. He had to die for the sins of man. He died for me. When I came to Christ, 18th of December, 1970, I confessed my sins. I said, I'm a sinner. Christ, I invite you to come into my heart. That time I was a teenager. Powerfully, beautifully, heaven entered my spirit. I felt so good, confessed my sins. The burdens that were on my shoulders were dropped. I became a new person. I'm now a follower of Jesus. That night, it was on a Friday, the Holy Spirit entered me. I spoke in a new language I had not learned. And in that meeting, I heard the voice of God clearly. I have separated you, and I'm going to use you for my generation. I'm so, so, so thankful to God that that day I repented of my sins. Heavens came down. My heart was filled with joy. I received forgiveness of sins. The shackles of sin that held me as a teenager were broken. I went on to Bible school to study the word of God. And today, I am a pastor. I lead God's people. I am a shepherd. I am an overseer. I am a bishop. By the grace and the mercy of God. It was in God's plan that he would die for me. It was foretold by the law. It was told by the psalmists. It was foretold by the prophets. And he died. His death is the main purpose of why he came as man. Listen, my dear friend. He came so that he would identify with us. People ask, why do we talk about the virgin birth? Why do we talk of the humanity of Christ? Why do we talk of that he was hungry, he could be grieved, he could be tired, he slept? You know, for us to accept God, God had to identify with us. And that's why supernaturally, through the process of the Holy Spirit, a virgin by the name Mary, received that pregnancy through the power of the Holy Spirit. And after nine months, Christ was born. His conception was unique. His birth was unique. His life was unique. His death was unique. His burial was unique. His resurrection was unique. His ascension to heaven was unique. That's why he is very powerful. The word that became human being. He lived with us. He did miracles. He taught. He was crucified. He never sinned. He paid the price for your sins and for my sins. His crucifixion was very unique. Yes, was crucified with the sinners. He paid the price. He became humble to the extent of death. And then powerfully, he conquered death and hell. He resurrected the tombs split open. The rocks shattered. And then he walked on planet Earth for 40 days. They saw him go to heaven. Over 500 people saw him. 
two angels came and said, this same Jesus who has been taken from you will come in like manner. He's coming back again. Do you know him? Have you accepted him? My heart goes for you. This day, you can have a new beginning. This day, you can be forgiven. This day, you can be healed. These days, you can be restored. This day, you can have a focus and a destiny. How do I do that? Just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, you died for me. I am a sinner. I receive you into my heart. Clean me. Get into my life. Give me eternal life. I refuse the devil. I'm a child of God. I'm healed. In your name, I'll follow you now and forever. Amen. You have received him. Read the Bible. Find a church and join it. Read the scriptures daily. Pray daily. Connect up and hook up with believers. This word gives you authority to walk into the day. As you study, as you do business, as you travel, you are protected. I want to pray for those of you that are sick. Father, there are men and women who are in pain. There are people struggling. Others are in the hospital. And they are crying out, Jesus of Nazareth, hear my prayer. Come and deliver me. I speak healing. I speak deliverance. I loose you from the hold of Satan. I command supernatural, miraculous visitation. You are set free and healed in Jesus' name. May God bless you. Bishop George Gichana, word power today. And go into the day, a winner, a victor. Don't look back to what the enemy has done. You are delivered. You are blessed in his name. And until next time, I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.